all right so let's look at how to add any kind of hyperlinks any kind of motion or animation to your slides and even sound which in google sheets all of these can be done a lot of these are a really good way to add outside content to your presentation the uh, hyperlinks is good for sending your viewer somewhere else so that they can you know you, you can include uh, some other information somewhere, uh, other websites, that kind of thing. And then animations are really good or motion is really good for bringing people's attention back to your presentation and sounds do the same thing, even if they're just simple sounds or you could put music in there, um, really whatever. So first of all, I use the term hyperlinks. What is a hyperlink? All right, a hyperlink is Basically what today people mostly just call a link. We've shortened it and we just call it a link. But its official name is a hyperlink. You can turn text into a hyperlink, which technically then they would call it hypertext, or it could be a picture, or it really could be anything that you can click on to create a hyperlink or to create a link here in Google Slides. So let's try this out. So Google Slides gives you a couple of different ways to add a link, but there's two pieces you need before you can actually make a link. You have to decide, first of all, what exactly you want people to click on. So in this case, let's say I want them to exactly click on those three words. And it's just an example. So you'd have to feed it into your design any way you want to. But let's say I want them to click on those three words. But where is it going to take them? That's the second piece of information you need. So where are we going to go with it? A great reason for using hyperlinks is that you can take people to different locations, add different information into your presentation. So let's say that we go to just to YouTube really quick. All right. So at YouTube, let's say we search for a video that we want to include this Ultimate Dog Tease One is pretty cool. The great thing about YouTube is, is that it gives you a specific URL. When you go to the video, you can usually get that from the share button. Okay, this is the link you're looking for right here. We can just copy that link by clicking the copy button. It says it copied to the clipboard, so we're good to go. So we've got our two pieces. Here we've got what we want them to click on, and then I just copied to my clipboard, to my computer's memory, where it's going to take them, the URL it's going to take them to. Now, hyperlinks don't have to take you to a URL. Hyperlinks can take you actually to other slides in the presentation if you want, or it could actually open up other documents on a computer. So we've highlighted exactly where we want them to click, those three words. Now, there's two ways to get to this. You can either go up here to the toolbar that says where it says insert link, See that little chain link looking thing? Or you can right click this and you can go down here to link. Or obviously you could hit control K if you wanted to. Anyways, when you punch up the link, it actually brings up a window like this. So here it's repeating the text that we just highlighted. So then down here, we just paste the link with control V. Then we hit apply on that and notice what that does to your slide. That actually makes it look like a legit online piece of linked text. Now, I see a lot of people, even professionals, when they want to add a URL to their slide, they just come to the slide here and they just click Control V and they just paste it out on the slide like that. So now if you were presenting this to your board of directors, which one of those looks more like you know what you're doing? Right, this one looks absolutely pro. That one looks kind of iffy. All right, so I actually, I do not accept these in your PowerPoint at all. All right, when you're doing your PowerPoint for me, these are what your reference slide should look like. So why would I accept those as hyperlinks? That doesn't make any sense. So I really, I don't accept an HTTPS pasted on your slide anywhere in your slideshow. I will accept this piece of text that's highlighted in a color and underlined, denoting that it's a hyperlink. All right, so we'll get rid of those. Now, you'll also notice that I've clicked in here. It really doesn't go anywhere, but um, I can right click it if I want to test it, and I can go to open link. It's going to go directly to my video, just like that. 
All right, so I know that one works. Now, what else can be a hyperlink? Well, a picture can be a hyperlink. Let's try that out. Here I got a picture of a dog. So on pictures, if you wanna make them into a hyperlink, it's a little bit different. Okay, if I right click this, notice I don't have the hyperlink icon in here anywhere. That's because it's so busy trying to deal with that picture as a picture that it's not thinking of hyperlink. But if I highlight this picture, see I've got my little boxes around it right now because I clicked on it, it's active. And I go up here to my insert link. See, go up here, paste. I can paste my link right in there with control V. I can apply. Okay, now if you notice this, notice how that picture didn't change one bit. It doesn't didn't highlight it, didn't outline it, didn't give it a border, didn't make it look like a link at all. Now, which one of those looks better and more professional? One that looks like a big old fat HTTPS out on your screen or one that you can't even see. So if you were to be the one presenting this and let's say you were running out of time and you had a cool video that you wanted to show but you didn't have enough time because too many people ask questions or you know you talk too long, this one's kind of conspicuous. People are going to be like, well, what is that uh, link that you're not showing us? But if you're doing it picture style, nobody even knows that it's there. Okay. I can still go to that. Anytime I want to, or I can just ignore it. So for when you're actually presenting in a professional environment, these, this is a great way to do it. When you are submitting a PowerPoint to me, this is not a great way to do it because if I can't find the links I'm looking for, how can I give you credit for them? So if you're gonna do them behind a picture, that's fine, that's great. Just throw me a bone somewhere on the slide that says, you know, click picture for a video or click picture for whatever, where, wherever you're trying to send me, okay? Now, with the shapes in Google Slides, you can actually make your own buttons. Here's how you would do that. She would go up here to the Insert tab and I would like to insert a shape. It's got a ton of shape options right here. All right, so I'm just gonna do a simple one. It's gonna ask me to basically draw out that shape. There's my shape. Now, if I have the shape clicked on, okay, I can go up here to my toolbar and I can mess with that shape. All right, so I can change the border color. I can change the fill color. I can go up here to my format options and notice now I've got all of these options over here. I can throw in, uh, like, let's say I want to drop shadow. Let's say maybe, I don't know, kind of a reddish drop shadow, give it a little more distance, change its angle a little bit. Okay, with these format options, those are pretty awesome. So I have kind of what's looking like a button here. Great thing about these shapes is you can actually type inside them. And then with the with the text inside here, you can use your toolbar up here to change it up a little bit. So I can make it a little bit bigger if I want to. Let's say maybe 24, make it bold. I can give it maybe a different font. You know, I could center it if I wanted to change the, the color of the text if I wanted to, which is right here, font color. Now, right now, this is just a shape. And I can, you know, if the shape ends up being a little bit bigger than I want or whatever, I can change it like that. I can move it around and do whatever I want to with it, okay? So to make this a hyperlink, okay, I have some options. I can right click on it, and I can go down here to link, or of course, I can just hit up the insert link icon in the toolbar, and then I can paste my URL in there. Now that button is a link, okay? If I wanted to go to it, I'd click it, and I could just go to the link right here in my editing mode, or if I'm in my presentation mode, which kind of wigs my computer out a little bit from all the recording and stuff that I'm doing. So I'm not going to show you that right here, but you can try it out. If you go into your presentation, you can actually just click right on it. It'll go right to it. Okay, same kind of deal. Link, link, link. Can be pictures, can be shapes. 
make your own buttons, make them look nice. You can literally do whatever you want to do and use that link tool to create an, a professional looking hyperlink. Now, motion or what they sometimes call animations. I'm not talking, when I talk about animation, I'm not talking about bringing in like a GIF, you know, like a dancing banana or whatever GIF. That's not the kind of animation I'm talking about. Presentation software, Google Slides, it doesn't matter, PowerPoint, whatever it is you're using, they can all do animations, except in Google Slides, they call it motion. And anything that we can click on, it could be text, the title, it could be this box over here, um, it could be uh, our picture, it could be this button. We can make anything motion or animated that we want to. So to do that, you basically would click on anything you want to animate or move around, and you can go up here to view motion and see how it's going to, what that does is it pops out this side pane for us. Okay, now. We're doing motion. This right here, this is a slide transition. So this is how slide one will transition to slide two. I don't ask for slide transitions in uh, my requirements for the slideshow, but you can play with them if you want. There's some pretty cool ones here. Um, you can open that up. Those are kind of fun. I don't expect those because they're so super easy. Uh, that you can just play them if you want to. I'm not going to put any points on those. Okay, but I am looking for some animations. You know, I don't know how many. Whatever you think is right for your design is fine. Now, when you open this up, it should look like this. All right, it's going to ask you basically select an object to animate. So we're going to maybe animate this button right here. We're going to add an animation. Now, there are three different kinds of animations you can add here. You can add an entrance animation, you can add an exit animation, and you can actually add an, what they call an emphasis animation. Okay, but they in this program, they are all under this list. Okay, so here are your options. Something like spin is going to be an emphasis animation. Okay, it's just going to draw attention to your object without bringing it in or taking it out, it's just going to spin it. Okay, so if we want to do maybe, uh, let's say, fly in from the left. Okay, now down here we can play this. There's our speed, whatever, but we can hit play and it'll show us. Okay, it's waiting. We click. There it comes. That's our animation. Now it's waiting for us to click again so we can go back to our editing mode. All right, now, the reason why I waited for us to click is because we've got our animation fly in from left is set to go on click. Okay, we have two other options here. We can do after previous or with previous. With previous means that it's going to happen the same time as what happened before it, which I'll show you in just a minute. After previous means it's not going to wait for a click. As soon as whatever its previous thing happened, it's just going to happen automatically after that previous thing is done happening. Okay, so in this case, let's say we want it to just happen after previous. What was the previous thing that happened? The slide showed up. Okay, so as soon as slide two comes on, that's going to come in. It's not going to wait for a click at all. So now we can test it out right here. No click. Here it comes. It is going to wait for us to click here to get out of animation view mode and back into editing mode. Okay, but that's just transitioning between the two parts of the program. So to do with previous, let's actually add another animation. Let's add an emphasis animation of spin. Now, let's start it off with after previous. Now watch what that does for us when we hit play. Okay, it should come in straight, and then after it's done coming in, it should spin. It shouldn't wait for a click on either one. Let's try it out. Okay, here it comes, then it spins. So let's make the spin a little bit faster. Maybe half a second. Try that out. It's coming in, spins a little bit faster. It's awesome. Okay, now let's check what happens if it does it with previous. Now remember, after previous means it was sliding in and then it was spinning. With previous means it's going to start the slide in and the spin at the same time. So here's what you get. 
notice that as it came in, it spun. Now it spun pretty quick, so maybe we want to slow that down a little bit now. Okay, or we could speed up our fly in. Okay, maybe we'll speed that up to 0.8 second, and then the spin, we can twist that to 0.8 seconds so they're the same. Now let's try it. It should come in and spin at the same time, and they both end, snaps right into place. Okay, now we can make it maybe let it wait there. Add another animation. Maybe we want it to leave after we're done. So what we're going to do on this one is we're going to have it wait for a click. And then we're just going to have it fly out the top. Okay, maybe our duration on this one should be maybe a half a second. doesn't have that far to go. So let's try it out. Here it's going to come spinning. Boom. Now it's waiting. We can click here in our presentation to go to our hyperlinked URL. Or if we click somewhere else. Wow, this is wrong. We need it to fly out to top. Thought I caught that. All right, try one more time. Here it comes, spinning, flying in. That's waiting for us to click. Click and it just flies away. Okay, pretty good. So that's hyperlinks and animation. In your presentation, I'm looking for at least two hyperlinks. Make sure I can find them. And I'm looking for however many animations you think is appropriate, but remember, don't get crazy with them. If you get crazy with them, people get motion sick. That nobody wants to get motion sick watching a presentation. So, so keep them under control. The animations are just to bring people's attention back to your PowerPoint, back to your presentation. All right, now let's try some sound. Let's say we want to go to insert audio. Now, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to go, obviously, to your drive. Whatever you're trying to do for sound, you need to put that in your Google Drive. Anyways, I'll show you what it is. I won't be able to play it, but I'll show you how it works just because I can't play it because on YouTube, YouTube has a, a side algorithm that catches copyrighted music like heart in a heartbeat. So if I were to put any songs on there that were copyrighted, would flag this video and then you wouldn't be able to see it anyway. So uh, we just do the Star Spangled Banner one, throw it on there, show you how it works. So it's going to put it on there on the slide anywhere you want. You can move it around. You can have it play automatically or on click. So if you added a song, maybe it was one of your own original songs or it was just a song you liked because you're not going to be presenting these on YouTube. So it's not going to find your copyrighted music. You're actually just going to sh submit them back to Canvas. So if you put a song in there, an MP3 or whatever that you like, th this is how the audio playback options work. Okay. So if you were to put this on your first slide and have it play automatically, as soon as your slideshow opens, you'd have background music. Now don't let it blast. If it's background music, keep it background music. Usually background music is about 30 or 40% then I would probably recommend hiding the audio when it's presenting. So if it was automatic on the first slide, as soon as the slide showed up, we'd start playing. If it's some kind of audio that you've recorded with your own voice or whatever, and you want somebody to click on it, then obviously don't check that. There'll be a little audio insignia on the slide and you can have them just click it. Or you can put it on a specific slide and have it start automatically. Now, if it's background music and your background music is one minute long, but it takes people five minutes to get through your slideshow, you could tell it's a loop, which means as soon as it's done, it's going to start over. So that background music will play through the whole slideshow. It's actually a pretty nice way to do it. But if you loop the audio, you're going to want to make sure. And if it is background music for your whole slideshow, uh, you would want to turn this off. You don't want it to stop on slide change. So basically with the way it's set here, this sound is going to start playing. Notice it's one minute and 25 seconds. So it is the Star Spangled Banner. But if you have it set up like this, wherever this icon is, which if you want background music should be on your title slide or maybe your second slide, I'll have it play automatically, crank the volume down a little bit because background music is background music, and then hide the icon, loop it in case, like in case it takes somebody more than a minute 25, to get through my slideshow, it would start the music again, and then don't tell it to stop on slide change. Now, if you wanted the sound to play for just that slide, 
You could keep it on automatic. You could also hide the present, hide the icon when presenting. And you could even loop the audio. If somebody stays on your slide for like 10 minutes, that's fine. But when you, if you want a new song to play on your next slide, you would tell it to stop on slide change. And then on your next slide, you would add a new piece of audio. Now, once again, I'm being really careful because I have to put this on YouTube so everybody can view it for this class. But you could probably put just about any song there you wanted. Okay, because you're not putting it on YouTube. You're just going to submit it through Canvas. And when I watch it, okay, I'll be able to see that you've got music there, you've got sound there, whatever it is you want. And it could be very fantastic for me. Uh, it could be whatever. When you're turning this into me, I'm looking for 15 slides, any subject you want. I'm looking for at least two hyperlinks. Okay, I'm looking for some kind of motion, or the, sometimes they call that animations. And then I'll be looking for some kind of sound somewhere. Whatever you can get put in there. I just want to know that you know how to add a sound to a slideshow. Thanks for watching. See you later.